At age seven, he's pretty safely the youngest member of the Antique Fan Collectors Association. Mitchell Walton is not your average first grader because he is a full-fledged fan fanatic. From the tall oscillators to the floor models, he has the lowdown on every fan in Cahoe Elementary School. The motor might be very dirty and probably very good. Those, this guy blades. knows yeah, his fans. Really this one, um, they don't sell any of these anymore. Mitchell Walton has a one-track mind. This one needs a screw in the cage. Do any of your other friends here at school love fans as much as you? I don't think so. That is a pretty solid guess. Mitchell and his computer teacher are the only members of this modest fan club. Mrs. Cordes had Mitchell work on one of her fans. I said, well, you think that needs cleaning too? Well, yeah, I do. Well, then when, when I got it out, he said, do you suppose I could keep this fan? And, he, and it was just something that he needed to have. Turns out Mitchell needed a lot of fans. This kid is a collector extraordinaire. I'll show you my first one right up there. Mitchell's collection has grown to over 130 fans, and his love of fans even affects his fashion choices. I love my fans. His world revolves around fans, from his clocks to his taste um, in chairs. It looks like a fan on it. The obsession took some getting used to for the rest of the family. At first I think it was kind of shocking that we would be buying every fan that we saw, and so I, but um, as a teacher, I think it's great that he has a passion. That passion has Mitchell and his dad working in the shop every night. We want to see how far he wants to take it. I mean, I'm not going to um, shoo him away from it, and we have fun with it when we go to conventions. And it's at those fan conventions where Mitchell amazes his father. Some days, you know, you, you think he, he's not seven anymore. He's, he's a 20-year-old guy, and he's out there. You know, I just let him go with them guys. Let's make it work. Mitchell isn't sure just exactly what it was that got this fan passion underway, but one of his most popular theories is that there were probably some fans in the hospital room where he was born, and maybe that's why he loves fans so much. Justin Picaric is a true outdoor enthusiast. He grew up in tiny Staplehurst, Nebraska, with just two things on his mind baseball and hunting. From as early as Justin can remember, his dad George was right there beside him, teaching him an appreciation for the great outdoors. It all started out when Justin was a little kid. I got him going hunting. As soon as he was old enough to deer hunt, these are some of our trophies we got. Justin's early years were filled with time spent outdoors. The bottom line, I mean, it was a picture-perfect deal going on. You had the hunting in the fall, and baseball in the spring. And that love of baseball led him to Lincoln, where he fulfilled a lifelong dream and played for the Huskers. Justin's playing days are behind him now, but that just means more time out in the wilderness. As his plates proudly state, he's always hunting. This time, he's tracking turkeys with his bow and arrow. Set up sack that easy. We're gonna... Set him up about five yards here from the blind. Nothing fires up Justin like hunting. I can't sleep at night, Lance. I mean, this, this stuff's unbelievable. Justin's I mean, unbridled so enthusiasm gives, is so contagious. <laughs> it's awesome. It's in my blood. It's going to be in your blood after tonight, buddy. State officials are hoping to find more and more people just like Justin. In the past, Nebraska had a great heritage of families doing things in the outdoors together. Today, there's just so many more things competing for your entertainment hour. But the quality of those experiences hasn't changed, and that's what we can't lose touch of. All right, people, this is called your doghouse. For Justin, much of the thrill of hunting is in the process. A car seat. Especially on nights like this, when he goes home empty-handed. There's nothing I'm more thankful for uh, in my life than having an opportunity to hunt with my family. This is the good life in Nebraska. We're out here in the woods. You can go out with your family. You can hunt with your family. What else do you ask for in life? Justin was drafted by Cleveland in 2004 and was considered one of the best young prospects in the Indians organization before he broke a bone in his upper arm in the spring of 2006. That ended his baseball career but the good news for Justin is, at least the arm injury doesn't affect his hunting.
Vosh International is a 35-year-old organization that is dedicated to providing eye care for people below poverty level. Vosh stands for Volunteer Optometric Services to Humanity. And once Gary Peterson made his first trip with Bosch in 1986, he was hooked. Over the past 20 years, the Kearney State graduate has made over 20 trips to South America, Central America, and Mexico. I'm just going to have you look up at the letters out there on the wall for me. Dr. Peterson sees an average of 15 better. patients a day in his Grand Island office. That's better. But when he's working south of the border, he'll see up to 100 people a day. Our goal is to help as many people as we can in a short period of time. And these are mostly people that don't have the means of buying their own glasses or getting to a location where they can get their eyes checked. And so for a lot of these people, it's kind of their one-time shot to have their eyes checked. Each year, Dr. Peterson looks forward to his next chance to volunteer his time and expertise to those less fortunate. Once you go and you kind of get the experience of what it's all about, then, you know, it seems like you're kind of hooked. There are six Nebraska eye doctors that travel south on a regular basis. For most of them, it just gives them such a good feeling to be able to do what they do as a profession and yet go out and help somebody in, in a different type of setting and a different culture. Along with an eye exam, the doctors take along 5,000 pair of used glasses that they give to their patients. And when Dr. Peterson can restore someone's ability to see clearly in what may have been their first eye exam ever, all political and philosophical differences are set aside. They appreciate what we're doing down there, and so it, it's and it's it's pretty fulfilling to get their responses. You know, they may maybe wanting to give you a chicken or something to pay for your services. One of Dr. Peterson's most gratifying moments came when a couple that were both in their 70s finally got glasses many years after they had had cataract surgery. They put those on. And they looked at each other and they started hugging. And I mean, they hadn't seen each other for years since they'd actually had the surgery done. So, you know, it's those type of things that make it worthwhile. The details are yet to be finalized, but Dr. Peterson and his fellow Nebraskans are planning on yet another trip later this year. This one to the southern Mexico state of Guerrero. Lyndon Carragher was born in Lincoln and raised in Omaha, and he has been singing for as long as he can remember. The 26-year-old spent four years working at a television news station before he decided to go back to his roots and focus on his career in music. He's now the minister of music for two churches, one in Lincoln and one in Omaha. He'll move your mountains, he believes in your dream. When Lyndon Carragher sings about dreaming, it's coming straight from the heart and experience. That's where his wife slash manager slash promoter comes in. I'm his everything. Yeah, yes, you he are. Cannot, he cannot <laughs> exist without me. <laughs> Lyndon had always dreamt of singing at a pro basketball game, so his wife sent demos to almost every NBA team a year ago. In November, Tina got good news from Los Angeles. The Lakers called, and I think I bet I had a heart attack. And now to honor America, will you please rise and remove your hats for the singing of our national anthem this evening by Lyndon Carriger. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light. It was packed, it was sold out, and then to have Kobe there and, and then know that this team went to the NBA Finals too, so that was great. Lyndon's voice sounded amazing in the stadium. I think I was more nervous than he was. Because I'm thinking, he's never sang in front of thousands upon thousands of people. I would have never thought, me as a little kid coming from Lincoln, Nebraska, that I'd get to sing on that platform. It made me proud to represent Nebraska. And he's also very proud that he's been able to overcome a challenging start to his life. I was put into foster care basically since I was five days old. Uh, both my parents had severe mental problems. Um, both of them were diagnosed with um, schizophrenia. Given my past experiences, I want to be able to encourage people, um, let them know that they can overcome too, as long as they have God in their life. Dreams. 
With his hoop stream already accomplished, Linden has now set his sights on future performances. At the top of his wish list are the Super Bowl, the Grammys, and most importantly, a Husker football game. To find out more about getting your hands on Linden's new CD, go to KOLNKGIN.com and click on Lance's Journal.